All right, World Champs was on the weekend. I assume everyone knows in the world that Remco won. So, how many watts did Remco do? Now, it's an interesting question um, because he obviously doesn't post power data. But also interesting because we have seen some of his data from previous ones. So, you can sort of have a guess. Um, of, like, the top contenders, unfortunately, not too many post power data. Like, Christoph does, but it's ruined. And then we're down to, like rotor and, and people like them but anyway um it doesn't matter too much because most people are in the bunch like powerless finished here but obviously is in the same group so i think the key thing to actually first look at is not what remco's power data is but not what powerless's power data is but not uh, sorry but what bruno amarai is now france did an interesting tactic um where they launched it really early and actually you'll see some of the hardest uh, data was from early on so you can see before the climb it was actually pretty hard 330 normalized you can see okay let's say like this part here 365 normalized for the first half an hour obviously amarai was like going with moves and we can probably compare that to like powerless to see how hard it was for him but i'd still say you'd be surprised how hard it was um really because a lot of people wanted to get in the break and actually what this did was make it a really hard world championships from the off so you can see first 25 minutes again okay he's not chasing moves so the normalizer is 306 but powerless is i think weight wise like 60 something 66 so like still you know four and a half or something like what's per kilo like obviously that's pretty chill for these boys but it goes to show like it wasn't super easy and that you can actually see heart rate 145 is decent okay and then before the first climb yeah it got super easy it got really 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 easy um if we look from like this heart rate peak to the climb, you know, it's 170 normalized. And that is literally like a walking pace for these guys. So super easy, 32k an hour. That is like, you know, anyone can keep up with that. But um, I think what the important thing then to show is how hard Bruno Amarai and the French team did it. Obviously, Sivakov did the first bit, but Sivakov rides for Ineos, so he's not allowed to post power data. Um, you can see this first part of the climb was like, 5 was 5.2 was kilo. okay that's not easy for sure like it's not you know it's not like super super chill um but like 4.9 for the first six minutes is fine and then Sivakov went crazy so you can see the accelerations early on you can see here like he's definitely not on the front just because the way the accelerations work but you actually see that six and a half was per kilo for 12 minutes and obviously on the front you're getting a decent draft um but when he did like properly drill it here you can see like because this bit here you can obviously tell he's on the front because the the pedaling is so smooth and then he, he hopped off there but you can see like on the front he's doing like 6.4 watts per kilo and that makes that climb really really hard and even if you're sitting in the wheels like nielsen paulus was he's still doing like 6.2 watts per kilo um up mount kira so again like really hard if you look at his peak 10 minutes like normalized is 460 watts which is here and that's so far out like look that's like a 220 kilometers left and i think that really changed how the world championships was raced in a lot of ways but also the fact that it's not going to be uh like the way it's split as well um if we look at alexander Kristoff, this is really interesting um because what you'll be able to see i think yeah alexander Kristoff's here he actually climbed about a minute slower than everyone else he did like 4.9 watts per kilo average 23k now at six percent instead of like 25 um but yeah if we look at mount kira here um you know you can see so that's not the whole this is the full the full climb you can see here he he lost a minute on the climb so again that goes to show you that actually um it really was quite decisive what france did it caused the splits and then that set up everyone else later on um so yeah i think pretty pretty interesting how france went about it obviously then it was still relatively hard and you look from then on it's 320 normalized for five hours okay that's that's pretty good for powerless but what you maybe normally would have expected is like this first bit here um, you know, like before the climb, when it was so easy, it was like 170 watts, you'd expect the climb to ruin at like four and a half, five watts per kilo. Uh, and then, you know, just noodle along and slowly catch the break. And then the last two hours would be like super, super hard. Um, but again, okay, still the last hour was hard for sure. 364 normalized, you know, that that's the difference between the top guys is that in the last hour, they can whack out that best power. But I think what it go does go to show is actually that the first half an hour was some of the hardest racing. Um, obviously, it's a climb, so normalized and average power is going to be higher. But still, super, super impressive. And you can see like how how hard it was. And also um, that it was 
quite an impressive one. So it was about 70 kilometers to go uh, where one of the, the real big selections were made on the climbs. Um, you can see here, so it's 100k to go. I think it was on, uh, yeah, about this climb, the climb here. Now, I, I'm going to maybe talk about the course in a while because it's not really just the men's course, it's everyone's course. But you can see here, this was the selection again. Uh, Nielsen Palace, I believe, did make the selection, 416 watts, you can see here. Super, super hard, like A was for kilo for two, two minutes. That's really, really impressive. And then he was actually in the front group with Remco. Um, they end up getting caught, of course, but um, we can then see Remco as well, uh, how impressive he was. Now, you can only have cadence data, which can only tell you so much, but you can see from here, like 33K to go, he started to be active. Um, and you can see 46K an hour, but you can look at sort of like the last 20K when he was really on his own. Um, 46K an hour around here very very quick no no denying that um you could argue that it really suited him and i i, I would think that's true is that you've got this sort of minus one percent sort of downhill section where obviously he's really good you know that you'd say that the weakest part of him would probably be like into a headwind maybe like well, i guess headwind and arrow helps i don't know i just think like you know the downhill super high speed he obviously really likes he really arrow and obviously the uphill like steep stuff he's he's pretty good at because he's just so light um, so there's not really much on this course where you'd say, okay, that's not great for him, um, at all. So you, again, you can see it's nine and a half percent, 21 K an hour. That's, you know, seven and a half, 7.3 was per kilo. He's still doing up here. You know, he's definitely will be averaging, um, close to, you know, 6.2, 6.3 for that half an hour effort. Super idle as well, which is the key thing for the boy. So super impressive ride from him. Um, then in the final sprint, we can go have a look at, um, Christoph, the reason I haven't shown you Christoph, obviously like 360 normalizers, he's not getting round. And that's because when you look at the power data, yeah, like that's obviously that's, that's a lie. So a bit of a shame really, because it would be interesting to see how many watts Christoph did. Like you can see this probably, probably is correct. Like 550 watts up there. Um, and then at the end, again, like that square is weird. Then it drops. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't really... I doubt he's getting sick at the world champs with a sprint like that, or set the seventh, sorry. I think it would be more, uh, a little bit higher. You can see Battistella. I can't remember exactly where he Battistella finished. He had an okay race as well. Oh, no, he wasn't even in the front group. I thought he was. Uh, clearly not. Clearly my brain uh, confuses me. But anyway, pretty impressive ride. And then Nielsen Paulus again, you can see sort of like the last bit. Once they got caught, it was obviously very hard. Um so sort of long pulls here trying to get across 900 watts in the sprint but yeah that's basically the world champs for the men's remco just destroyed um the women's i need to do videos on as well um i actually need to do more videos on the world champs generally because Annemiek van bluten's win was absolutely unbelievable um i couldn't really believe it. obviously she doesn't have power either so a bit annoying but um yeah more content will be turning up shortly